everybody, and welcome to Travelers, a Destiny podcast, episode number nine. I am the Helmet Fire, your moderator and co-host, and joining me this evening is Crazy J, Eric Digital, Angel Zero, returning from hiatus. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, Contrabang. <laughs> and then we have our special guest, Jake Parker. Welcome to the show, everybody. What's up, man? What's up, guys? How's, How's everybody going? doing? How? Hey. Tired. Back to rally. Tired. Tired, yeah. yeah. Tired. Back to rally wore me out, so... <laughs> It's 4th of July tomorrow. How can you be tired? Uh, I need to I mean, I'll be, I'll be an energy. Arm, yeah. <laughs> you know, where are the fireworks? You know, where's the fire through the burgers and the barbecue? Come on, yeah. America. That's yeah. tomorrow. Happy birthday, tomorrow. America. Happy birthday, America. Let's do <laughs> this is the this is the this is the pre happy birthday America episode of Travelers. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. There we go. I'm just going to get my banjo. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was terrible. So, we have a great episode this evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you are tuning in live on Twitch, we appreciate your viewership. And uh, what we got tonight, we got our special guest, Jake Parker. We're going to talk to him a little bit, uh, get some uh, info on some esports uh, and charity stuff that he's done recently. We're also going to talk about faction rallies the TWAB, and the July 17th update coming up soon. So, right off the bat, Jake, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Re- yep. I really appreciate you. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. Uh, little background, just real quick. I actually got to meet Jake last year at Guardian Con, though we didn't get to hang out too much. Uh, I did yeah. get to meet him there, and uh, I think uh, you've been working on doing something like this uh, charity tournament for a while right well tell us a little bit about that and how it got started and and what you were able to do with it yeah so it actually all started in uh october last year after the events of the las vegas shooting um so a couple of gamers and i my brother myself and another guy alex cox also known as official dark he uh, thought of this idea where we could try to give back and do uh, whatever we could to you and you utilize the gaming community the what we've been doing for such a long time um, and give back to you know the victims because uh, we're Las Vegas locals. And uh, we reached out to the American Red Cross. We set up an event in four days. We were live um, in the game works that it's inside Town Square on the Las Vegas Strip. I don't know how we managed that. It was a miracle. Um, and then we had a 13-hour event there, but we didn't, didn't want to stop. We, we we couldn't stop there. Um, we wanted stop, to continue stop. growing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I firmly believe in the uh, the idea of doing the impossible. You know, if you if 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 you want something to happen, you go out, you do it, you make it possible, even if somebody says you can't. Um, so January we did a 72 hour Fortnite live stream event, 72 hours long, um, raising more money for St. Jude at that point. And then we started thinking, okay, now what is it that Destiny needs? And uh, I got networked with one of the guys who just started getting a job at the esports arena here in Las Vegas. And kind of the rest is history. He's like, hey, I know you did a charity event. Can you make a tournament? And I was like, Destiny needs this. It's a no-brainer. I can make it happen. So we did. And that's what you saw last weekend. Yeah. No, that was that was really cool. Um, I know there was Bungie developers that were tuning in, retweeting. Uh, I believe John Wisniewski was one of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that was really, really cool. Like, you know <sighs> – and, and and I know you're gonna love this part. So uh, I was talking to you offline before the show, and uh, you know we talked a little bit about how there's a lot of controversy surrounding this whole thing you're doing. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. How you're, you know, filtering through all that salt, and uh, you know, and, and tell us a little bit about that. Just for those that aren't in the know. <laughs> Okay, well, let's face it. Anybody that's coming from D1 has a very sharp image of what D2 should be as far as esports. And let's face it, we have a lot of yep. division going on between how people are perceiving esports in the community. Um, and no, and everybody really is afraid to just make that venture because they don't believe that the game is esports ready. They, they, nobody's taking the time to try. They're, they're saying it's impossible, which again, I don't like the word impossible. I make those things possible. Um, and everybody was like, you can't do it. It's not going to work. It there's, we're not going to, it's not the right time. Wait till September. And I was like, I got this venue. I have the charity. I have the event. Everything's ready. People want it. Just do it. This is what we've needed since destiny one. Just do it. And I was getting messages the day after each event saying, why are you doing it? What's the point? Why are you even bothering? Like, I literally had people from the like, like you know major guys like major top guys I'm not going to mention names saying this isn't the right time you shouldn't have done it you should have waited till after September and 
that's harmful. I mean, that's that's the the egos from Destiny One coming back into play that need to go away. That just needs to stop. And it it, it, it you can't please everybody, I guess. So no, it seemed like definitely like I think I, I love I love this because uh, I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, I me you know this is just me personally, but I you know is the game ready for esports i don't think that's the question we should be asking i think the question yeah. we should be asking is what are we doing to get it there if it's not there you know what exactly. are we doing to support it in its current state and exactly. if we continue doing that and supporting it and and pushing events like these and supporting events like these that just puts more pressure on bungie to support it more and evolve it into the thing we all want it to eventually be you know so i, I don't exactly. think telling it to go away ah oh, just wait till later blah, 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 that never got anybody anywhere but that's just me so what do you guys all think no. i agree even aside from the whole developing destiny 2 into an esport uh i would have figured that the charity itself would have been exactly. far more yeah. important they would have trumped mm-hmm. any other argument uh exactly. that you could have made uh, on whether or not Destiny Two was, uh, is or you know, was or is worthy of, of, of viewership, it's it's you know more importantly you know what's what's the cause that we're supporting because the Destiny community in the past has always come together uh, to support whether it was a uh, earthquake in Nepal or any other uh, any other deserving charities. So uh, to say that all right, well, D two is not ready. It's, that seems like a moot point. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm I'm skeptical when it comes to whether or not it, it is actually ready. There, there's a lot of things that I I disagree with with the current setup of how Destiny is looking in terms yeah. of a competitive sport. You know, the the, the symmetrical maps. The, there's no no analog to the old maps that were big, large. That you have multiple ways of playing. Uh, you know, the the six v six thing was was kind of like my my gripe for for a long time. But even the three v three that we have before with trials, even that replayability has gone away, uh, and, and I believe that as a game itself, there's there's been a lot to please the community, which in turn it just makes it bland in in terms of weapons and and firefights. Uh, I mean, to get it there, there has to be a lot of imbalance and a lot of reconstruction yeah. of what Destiny Two is, as to, if you do want to capture what Destiny One was. Oh, it, it gets worse, and that's the that's the bad part. Is it gets worse? I mean, we, we I'm throwing this word ego around a lot, I mean, because a lot of people from a lot of people in the in the, in the directory and in the community are throwing this uh, this comparison ego that says, well, it's not Destiny One, or you're you're doing it at the wrong time, or you're not including the community in everything that you're doing, which is ironic because I had uh, partnered, unpartnered PVE PVP people. Um, helping to design the entire layout of the tournament before it ever started. The rule sets were actually seen by Bungie developers like John Wisniewski and Josh Hamburg, who helped to design the rule sets. Like, you can't tell me that the entire the entire event is not driven with community in mind if I included the community in the yeah, making of the event. It's like, that's place. not canon. Well, I, the <laughs> developer just sense. said it's cool. Well, <laughs> no, bullshit. Well, it's not canon. I'm not going to do it. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Hey, see, come for them who watched the tournament. I, I watched almost all of it, and it was for the most part it was really fun to watch. Um, yeah. There were times where it it, it felt really unbalanced, and the, the tournament the tournament style like environment highlighted some of the issues with the PvP game. Yeah. But overall, it was I, I thought it was fun to watch. The chat thought it was fun to watch. It looked like, and mm-hmm. and it was a success. I mean, it was you guys raised money for charity. Uh, everybody was in, everybody was into it. I mean, the, the first couple of games, I think it was a duels tournament. After that first game, I believe it got really, really close. Like, holy cow, it's intense! It's <laughs> yeah. lots of fun to watch. And the same thing with the, the, the last day, the, the the four on four was fun to watch too. Mm-hmm. You so, call them egos. I I call them heroes because the the trial carries and the people that carried people over on raids. You know that that's that's the whole uh, market that was catering to Destiny One players. You had big streamers. I'm not going to mention names, you know, because we're not going to get into that. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's how they thrived. That's how their their Twitch and their YouTube channels evolved and grew, and that's how they made money and and you know grew a community. It was about doing that carry. Uh, it was about you know getting that trials win. It was about completing Oryx it was just with just one person. You know, it, it was those kind of folks that that really helped grow the community a bit. Mm-hmm. So I, I can get why there might be some boost egos if you're uh, not, they're not included. I know, yeah. I, I know what they're talking, like I, I understand where they're coming from as far as like 
where the game is at and, and it's too early. I think it was I I thought it was early too at first, but after I watched, I was like, yeah, man, Jake Jake actually pulled it off. It's actually really fun to watch. Here, here's <laughs> um, here's what I here's what I think. Like Contra, I I totally agree. Like, and I I think what we're seeing here, you know, whatever you, if you want to call it an ego or not, like I think what's really at the base of it what ha- what's happening is because you take these large influencers that we're talking about here when we had the pinnacle you know of of the community with trials carries and raid carries and and you know um and you know with with that falling off and the way d2 has uh kind of um hindered a lot of that and it's redesigned i i think what's really happening here is these influencers i think all of us collectively are just like damn like i want that back you know so yeah. but Instead of instead of saying you know what, this is what we got. Let's work with it and just try to back it as much as we can, and then you know eventually we'll get it back to where we went. Instead of doing that, they're I think they're letting their frustration get the better of them, because like Jake said and like y'all been saying is, you know the the first and what Eric said actually is is the first thing everyone should be, remember is this is for charity for God's sake. Exactly. I mean this is you put put all that aside. It doesn't matter what I think or anybody else like this. They, the charity should be the focus if that's what it's centered yeah. around, obviously. And then, and mm-hmm. then secondarily, I think that whether you're a huge influencer or not, if, if you were somebody who really liked Destiny One the way it was, and now we don't have that, like, look, guys, like, I, I think everybody could probably collectively agree that we would like the game to be better in a lot of areas. But in the meantime, it seems like Bungie is working up towards that, and while they're working towards it, let's continue to ask those questions, like. How can I back these kinds of events? How can I, you know, support these kinds of events so Bungie sees it, so we can get back to those those prime times in the community that we used to have? You know, I think, yeah, like Jake's been saying, set set whatever your reasonings are aside, and let's focus on making it better collectively. I think I think we're just seeing a lot of people like frustrated that it's not like that so they're like no nah, it's you know i'm not gonna do it until it gets back to the way it was well it ain't gonna get back there unless we step up i think and, so, I, Jake- and, I, and I think that oh, i'm sorry um it's gonna say I, and I think that uh that they're getting too caught up in like maybe holding a bungee accountable for what they think is wrong with destiny 2 right. which is fine but at the end of the day like this is for charity and people are stopping from doing it mm-hmm. Just let it happen. Let it happen, and you know, yeah. enjoy. If you don't like it, then you know. I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of reason why we did what we did is because um, a lot of people were so scared that it would fail. Um, I mean, I've I've had a lot of a lot of feedback from a lot of higher name people that said, you know, this is one of those instances where this is there's a possibility of failure, and and, and I, I accept that. I res- I respect that because there's always a possibility of failure for anything that we do. I mean, you should see what we're doing next year. Oh my god! Um, but <laughs> yeah, trust me, you can tell us. About I'll it. share. I'll share that in a minute. Um, <laughs> but I'm willing to accept that there's going to be some form of failure. But the people, there's not going to be any innovative changes. We got to be open to new ideas and being able to, like you know, like Helmet Fire said, grow and be able to move forward and continue to take what we have, embrace it. Um, could it have waited till September? Unfortunately, no. For time, could it have been better in September? Most likely, it could have absolutely been. But I was embracing what we had now with the time that we were given, and we made wonderful things happen. And we really showed um, the power of how if the community came together and actually just made the effort, Bungie has something to hold on to. We, they took developmental notes. Now they're making plays possibly with you know what they're going to be doing in D2 Forsaken or even D3. So I consider it a win-win, and plus it was for charity. It's even more. So in recent memory, and maybe my memory is just bad, but I don't think... I don't remember a, a large event put on for either Destiny One or Destiny Two not to this scale. I could be wrong. Uh, uh, as far as uh, like a, a tournament style and to this scale, has there been one done in the past? Guardian Con, kind of, yeah. kind of. Guardian Con was a big one for D One last year. It was, really, so, it was fun to watch. Like, I was like, to Jake's point, yeah. why wait? But not only, more importantly, let you know why couldn't why can't something like this be used as a learning experience on what to do better the next time uh the community wants to do something like this you know and uh yeah there's i i don't see any problem with that i like it you you sir are a disruptor and just keep on doing it don't 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 (laughs) don't worry about who your friends yeah exactly no seriously i mean 
uh, look, you don't I'm, get I'm anywhere very, by not trying. Well, exactly. But I'm a very uh, anti-status quo type of person when it comes mm. to like stuff like this. You know, the, why yeah. does there there only have to be one or two big, big conventions with with names that we already know? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, why can't there be anything new? You know, that's yeah. that's exactly the same mentality why a lot of people drove got driven away by this game into another game that's currently popular because they're they're chasing that newness this 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 idea that there's somebody out there that can be better than you in gameplay and you want to watch them or you want to follow them or you want to know how they do it uh yeah. you know and you can't find these new people unless there are new events that highlight their skills uh, yep. and, and without that kind of disruption we will just be bored of, of, of destiny no matter how good the story is you know they can make the they can make all the fixes and addendum and even include like Star Trek time travel and fix a lot of things, but if there is no disruption, you know, in, in the mist like you're doing, then we will just be stuck with with boring content, and and yeah. that's sort the, of the same side as quo. Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. going back to the whole D1 debate, like you know, people are saying, "Well, this isn't D1. Go back to D1," and blah blah blah. Of course, it's not D1. It's a, yeah. it's a sequel to D1. Don't make it like D1. Yeah, some things can be fixed, but it's. D2, don't go back to D1. There's no point. There's a reason it's a sequel. And going back to people saying it's not the right time. Is there ever a right time for anything? Exactly. Like, and it's for, like you guys were saying, it's for charity. You know, mm -hmm. don't make a complaint about something that is helping other people. How dare you do things life. that are great for kids? You know what? Exactly. Get, you're off the <laughs> show. No. Get out of here. <laughs> what is this? The mob? Yeah. You're on my turf. Do you know that, dude? So, <laughs> so Jake, question. What, what was your biggest takeaway from uh, looking back? If you had to you know, look back at the, the weekend to say, uh, you know, what worked, what didn't? What, what do you feel like? Uh, it's it's hard to explain, um, especially because, I mean, I went home in tears on Friday because the event didn't happen on Friday um, because of a person, not going to mention names, but the general manager, again, nameless, uh, refused to let us go because all of a sudden um, he was hired on two weeks before the event. He fired all the original crew that helped to get the event there and then said, OK, now we have this, uh, this charity event that's going to be happening, but they haven't paid us. So we need money from them or their event's not going to happen. And it literally Friday, they held the event ransom, which is exactly what happened. Wow. He said no, yeah. but that's exactly what it was. They said, if you don't give us money, you're not streaming. That's called a ransom. Um, so one of the takeaways right off the bat is on a administrative directive end for me. I'm thinking of the, the plan B's, plan C's, plan D's, making sure all of my, my, my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed and whatever. Um, so that in the event that there's any contingencies that need to be coming into play i know what i'm going to do um and then another big thing another takeaway is uh community community reception the people that were there i had 99 percent of the people said hey this is awesome that we see it may not have been the right time but we love what we're watching um and then you have the one percent who said nope not worth our time take it with a grain of salt you know like you said you know fighting the status quo i firmly believe the people that are on Twitch that literally rise to fame or rise to glory faster than others are the ones that fight the status quo and make a name for themselves by not following the norms, like you said, um, that other people are doing. Because you're blending into a crowd. You're not supposed to do that if you want to grow. Um, and this event is no exception. So looking ahead into next year, I firmly believe, just like we started Jan you know, October of last year to January to now, we've consistently challenged ourselves to get bigger each time. And we went from a 13-hour stream to a 72-hour stream to a full-blown esports tournament because we said we'd do it. We went out and we just did it, and we're going to continue that path. So good, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, what does the community need to do to get behind this? Short of of uh, of viewership or, or mm -hmm. donating to the to uh, the charity. What For do you feel the like? event, right? Yeah. Okay. Looking the forward. biggest thing that I need the community to do is to I, I guess in the way the word support is is thrown around, but I mean, sure. support could be anything from a simple host of being there to competing to whatever. The biggest thing I need the community to do is be open minded. Um, there's a, again, well there's said. a lot of comparisons well and it's a lot of the, oh yeah, I mean, let's face there, it. The yeah, people perfect. did a lot of comparison to what D1 was in Guardian Khan's tournament to now. And we never, Destiny's never experienced a full production 
full tournament the way that we were able to do last weekend. It's never happened because right, one, one up, yeah. we didn't have the tech to build, to do it. The community is the one driving it. Bungie's not supporting these events yet, um, but we're showing that they need to. They need to embrace their game. They need to put some backing into their game, and the community needs to continue to put that pressure on the developer and say, look, they did this. They're going to make it even bigger next year. Bungie, you need to get behind this. We're going to get behind this as a community. Can you as a developer now get into this as well? So we need to have that type of support as well. So I'm a little fuzzy on the details, but I know that Bungie released a, sort of like a licensing deal so that people mm -hmm. can set up tournaments with Destiny. How, yes. how did oh, yeah. that work for you? So the tournament license says that you can operate your own tournament as long as you follow within the guidelines. The biggest one being that you can't go over $10,000 in occurred uh, prize pools through registration or whatever. Um, if you live stream it, you have to follow certain live streaming rules. You can only sell merchandise that does not have Bungie's name or Destiny 2 on it. Um, it can only be branded by the event name, but not Bungie. Um, it's all on their website. Um, so the tournament license is very fair, but it's also very, it's very restrictive. Because if it were up to me, next year we'd have a $100,000 prize pool. Um, which right now is looking very possible. So I've been working with a lot of, a lot of companies in the background. Um, Destiny is probably most likely going to have a full $10,000 prize pool. And we haven't even gotten to the event next year. So That's people awesome. can now compete and they can register. They can pay their way in, get this $10,000 prize pool. And then, spoiler alert, we're looking at the Thomas and Mack Stadium. It's a 25,000 uh, 25, seat capacity stadium wow. for this next event. Jeez. Dude, so I see a lot of comparisons. Let's go. Let's freaking go, man. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. <laughs> hey, um, that Jake, that actually reminded me of something. So, um, when I had spoke to you before, you had mentioned mm -hmm. uh, something about, and this is like pertaining to the salt, but not necessarily, like the, the people that uh, run Get Wrecked in the UK. I actually saw one of the community yeah. podcasts where it was featuring them, uh, Anubis, and I forget the other gentleman's name uh, that, that co-operate that. And mm -hmm. uh, the term you said was said to you was like, oh, you're just trying to step on them. And it was it's a very ridiculous uh, statement that they made. But... I wanted to ask you about like, have you had a chance to network with those guys, or do you plan mm -hmm. to in the future? And and what are the chances of a uh, some kind of co like collaborative thing between yourself and them? Have you have you thought about that? Do you know anything? Talk to them. Yeah, when this event was getting founded and designed five and a half months ago, um, I had talked to Farcog, I had talked to Anubis, and um, I you know I talked to Peter Solid, you know the guy behind Peter Solid GG and. Um, I've talked to all those guys behind DTR and they were fully on board to help with everything. Um, but one of the things that I was trying to do was get some talent out here, which they had, but I had to pay for it. Um, and I was trying to do my best to network with the original community that started tournament. Why? Because this is a new venture for me. I'm very passionate about it, but I wanted to know where we stood as a tournament uh, game and where, where, you know, where it was founded in D1, where, where are my playing field was. And those were the guys that kind of set the scene. And I brought, I wanted to talk to them. I wanted to network with them. Um, things kind of fell off just because, um, one, I couldn't bring their people here because um, financially I'd have to come out of pocket probably like $3,000 to be able to do so. Like, yeah. I just couldn't do it. Um, and, and we just kind of lost communication. But I was receiving DMs afterwards saying, like, apparently because I didn't shout them out during the event, it was very unprofessional. Again, kind of doing that uh, – hey why are you not scratching our back if we're scratching ours when there was none um so i think a lot of miscommunication led to a lot of things i would love to network and, con and connect and partner with get wrecked and dtr and do all these things um because that would be wonderful there's no reason why the destiny directory either pve pvp tournament based or anything needs to divide itself because one person's doing a venture and people choose not to support it because they're not following along the same path like it's so again it's it's pulling back to that ego hero thing that you were just talking about a while ago mm -hmm. where we had this set foundation a long time ago and i did something a lot different i got full production and i kind of did everything on my own now everybody's starting to take notice and they're like well you're not doing it the way that we used to do it and that's where that clashing started to come in so i want to partner with people but we got to work together as a community and as a destiny family that's how it's going to be successful so destiny is a competitive sport what, what, do you, what do you see as an end game for it <sighs> it's I, I i firmly believe it i've been saying this since i finally got the go ahead for this tournament destiny world championships will be a thing 
And I will, I will pioneer that with the community, with Anubis and Farcog and Peter and everybody that was in the Destiny directory before. We can do that, but we need to want it. We need to literally thirst for it, and we need to just do it. I have ESL behind us ready to give us full investment to make it happen. I have an MSM marketing company. I have a global oh, wait, events hold, hold on, Jake. <clears throat> Can you repeat that last statement? You I have, have you ESL. Have who? ESL. ESL. Mm -hmm. ESL. Mm -hmm. I have them fully ready to commit to everything they can with this venture. I have a global events company That's ready huge, to invest by the way. in everything. Yes. That's <laughs> like, a big freaking deal. That's why I said that because like you, you went real fast. And I was like, <laughs> I want the listeners to understand that. That, that has a lot of weight behind it. It's a, that, lot of a, weight. Lot of, a lot of weight. That's... That's crazy. I didn't know about that. That's that's awesome. Official ESL <laughs> backing, that. ready to go. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding um, me? It that's gets better. Great. Yeah. It gets so, bigger. It I really does. So. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Contra. Where's the hype Contra. man? <laughs> I know. No, I, I just want to know. Like, so, so in terms of the gameplay, uh, mm -hmm. if you had to control over what you do with Destiny, what would you change to make it more competitive? Ah. The super in terms of map changes. I mean, what would you like to see that you would think would make this game? really really ripe okay. for for competitive gameplay um the biggest okay the first thing that i would love to do is not have as much of a restrictive weapon and armor set that we've been starting to see kind of migrate from d1 when the tournament scene started because the thing that happened with d1 and i got a lot of feedback from a lot of people the biggest thing that they didn't like about d1 tournament style was that there were so many restrictions on anything it became stale and that was from many a people i, I kind of disagreed with them and you know you can't make a tournament without some kind of regulation but regulating something too much causes something to become stale and essentially boring i want to open that up i want to be able to network with the community and develop a new rule set that allows for almost universal freedom especially with random rules coming in and then oh man that's gonna map. be interesting it's gonna I can't wait for it. And oh, then yeah. um, a random map and a random playlist uh, pool system where before each match, it actually randomizes what playlist you're going to do and what map you're going to go on based on a select pool that you go through. And then you need to be able to, as a player, adjust to whatever playlist and map you're going to end up into during each round. All right. Yeah. I, have, I have a suggestion. I would like to vote that when it comes to selecting the map, and I want this officially like on the esports floor of the tournament, I want there to be... Mm -hmm a big plinko board and the little pucks can go down the plinko board and then wherever it lands that's the map you get okay that's what i want that's, that's, if we could do that i'd be happy Yo, john flip the switch yeah so, i see a lot of comparisons with what's going on with destiny 2 and trying to develop it into an esport is uh similar to what happened with Super Smash Brothers uh, several years back when they were trying to get uh, Evo presence, Evo being mm -hmm. a, a, a premier fighting game tournament where there's a lot of pushback against yeah. Super Smash Brothers uh, where uh, the fighting game community uh, pushed back because they didn't feel like he, uh, Super Smash Brothers was, was a was a, a, a fighting a worthy game. fighting game. It's not Super yeah, but... Smash Melee, so it's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's so the <laughs> Melee is the one garbage. they all like. Yeah, I feel the same way about Street Fighter. Tournament. Yeah, so the argument was like, oh, it's not a true fighting game; it's a party game. But they mm -hmm. that first year that uh, Smash Brothers was at Evo was I mean, it had it was huge. I mean, I think it pulled the number the largest number of viewership, second to Super Street Fighter Four at the time, which was its uh, the premier game. And now uh, Super Smash Brothers is an absolute <laughs> Evo staple. So uh, I think as long as keep supporting it, keep pushing for it, it'll develop and it'll. It'll yeah. make its way there. You sure? Oh, yeah. It's undeniable Absolutely. that there is a thirst to see some kind of competitive gameplay for Destiny. I, sure. I mean, yeah. even I am the cynic here, but I admit that I would like to see arenas full of people. Because, hey, it was it was my favorite game for a long time. I I, I give it, what, Helmet Fire? What do you give it, like, a year and a half? Just raiding oh, easily. everything? <laughs> easily, man. What we had, we when, when me and you used to help people do raids, it was like we would gauge, like, because we do a lot of LFG, right? And, and everyone will understand what we're getting at here, but it was basically like we either get a team that we, we just jive and it works, or we have a one-way ticket on the struggle bus, and that's what we call it. it was like, <laughs> yeah, and I'd get in, I would bus. come into Contra's game, and I'd be like, struggle bus tonight? And he's like, no, nah, no, we're good. And then some nights he'd be like, oh, yeah, struggle bus extreme. <laughs> Let's yeah, go. We're, we're, carrying, we're carrying three people that have never done it. Yeah. So, right. one, of them, one of them is drinking heavily. 
<laughs> I, I came into your game heavily had been drinking a few times i was like this is gonna be great i i i got this don't worry and then, oh and so many times so many this is off topic so many times contra troll people with the the taken orb and the war priest he's like yeah you go touch it and start oh, the yes. race <laughs> i saw him pull that off on blueberry so many times i even, I even made a small movie about it yeah, like, yeah go. To, to move on to the next level you gotta touch that orb up there can someone drop a link to that in chat or something because that's that's the best <laughs> so big picture looking at everything though yeah Gla glass half full i would say the only reason that people are making such a big fuss about this is because they care about the game yeah so yeah. maybe they want to see it because it's True. seed uh so there's, that's, hate, that's there's love yeah exactly yeah i mean that if you look at other games that would have been or are in destiny similar situation um those games that would have 99% of the time would have failed immediately um, because the community back in that they that they had were not as really passionate and wanting as the Destiny directory is. I mean, let's face it, the Destiny community is very, vastly unique um, and from all ages and groups and ethnics and just orientations and whatever. And like, they truly want the game to be so successful that it's driving the development of the game. And um, other games would, would have failed 100%. And the game would have literally shut down. Kind of like Battleborn. Battleborn fell off the race of the map. Great right. game. Just the community stopped caring because it came out as Overwatch. And it needed support it didn't have. Destiny does. Well, yeah, well, I mean, according they're... to Destiny Tracker, there's uh, 9.4 million players and uh, 751,000 PvE players yesterday. I mean, yeah, the numbers yeah. have been spiking quite a bit yeah. lately. I've been keeping oh, yeah. track of that too, and a lot of it is uh, obviously faction rallies is going on. It's a great mm -hmm. segue because Future War Cult finally won. Yes, thank yeah. you. But I will say this: like, I want to hear everyone's thoughts on this because it's becoming pretty obvious that the factions are winning based on. All right, well, I got the Catalyst of Dead Orbit. Now I want to get this one. Now next, everyone's saying next faction yeah. rally is probably going to win with New Monarchy, and you know what? Me personally, I think that uh, the Catalyst, like, I don't want to pledge to a faction for a Catalyst. I want to pledge to a faction because I like that faction, and but I also need a reason to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we literally, it, I just think it was the not, like, it was a good idea in theory. In practice, it didn't turn out so great. That's just my opinion. So what do you guys think? Uh, okay, so I at first I, I loved this. It was great, but now with the future World Cup winning, it's just like okay, well now you know they're win the first one obviously because Guard on Lance. Then now Sunshot, now the least liked one, which is gonna be the New Marquee Sweet Business Lance, um, Sweet Business uh, Catalyst. They're gonna win it, mm -hmm. but like it's just I, what can they do to make it better? Like I don't know. Like I, I for one, I I wouldn't pledge to New Marquee all the time, but I want the Catalyst, so I don't know. I think the account wide lock was unnecessary. I thought uh, it was. <laughs> I, yeah. um, that's one thing I don't necessarily agree with about the faction rally. I mean, it would have been nice to be able to pledge an individual faction for each character and then maybe stretch out that that rank throughout the entire summer. So that way you're still able to, you know, it, it, it gives it still gives meaning to the to pledging to your faction. I mean, you have to dedicate one character uh, to that faction throughout the, you know, the course of the season. Uh, but you're not missing out on any other, uh, on any other uh, factions because you have, or well, th I mean, this would only work for people that, have, that play three characters, I guess. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, that's it, the grind is for the faction rally to do 50 in a week, 50 uh, ranks is. I didn't do anything else. I wasn't able to because if I wanted to get that catalyst, uh, just based on time constraints. <laughs> I had to. I had to do nothing but lost sectors in public events the entire week. It was well, a grind. I like, agree with the whole account thing. Like, don't lock it by account because then I don't see a point when I see in D one. I loved that I could do different factions on different characters. Sometimes I even doubled up on Dead Orbit, you know, and um, I don't know. It just, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it, <laughs> it, it does tend to hurt your brain when you think of, like, you, you know, I'll, I want to say this. So, like, grind, uh, everyone's, uh, you know, the grind, yeah, I don't know. I don't think uh, rank 50 in a week is, uh, I think that's a little bit much. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I would have liked to have seen it just been like, hey, 
you can work on your faction all throughout the summer through season three just chip away at it and maybe the pinnacle whatever it was rank 100 instead of 50 and we could just do it every day and there's no just once a week maybe something like that but i will say this a lot of people are like oh man the renown and grinding loss sector sucks and blah blah i'm like okay now hold on a second all right now i got this to say about that we asked begged and pleaded and salted the whole ground in layers of salt with like hey i want a reason to do lost sectors bungee lost sectors make them relevant make it happen mm -hmm. blah, blah blah hey here's the thing renown factions it, hey cool mm -hmm. now i'm like thank you know what thank you bungee thank you for doing that thank you for giving a reason to do a lost sector yep. it, uh it in practice it wasn't the most fun thing to do to be honest uh so you know what let's take that feedback and evolve it but thank you for giving us what we did ask for that's mm -hmm. right what do you think uh, I've, seen, I've seen you playing on your stream and you run through those uh strikes like nobody's business so in mm -hmm. terms of playability what do you think of these things the the faction rally is a great concept that needs to be expanded on we got a great foundation um but just like it is the the lost sectors finally have meaning but they're literally one maybe two times before you finally have everything you need um i've i've had these really good ideas that i want to be able to have bungie you know implement like for instance going into a strike and i think i said this today um we only go into strikes to fit to get to the end why because we're going to get our faction tokens we're going to get whatever blues or exotic drops that up to exotics that we get um, and we go, when we go into a lost sector with a renown, we just want to beat the boss and we want to get our tokens and get out. The it's all about the end result, and there's there's no in between that we are really able to focus in and enjoy. So for strikes, I would love to see a faction bounty board, kind of similar to what we had in Destiny One, where there was a bounty board for you to pick, and every time you picked a certain strike, if that strike came up in your playlist and you ended up in that strike that bounty became active and you had to perform it inside the strike if you did the bounty is completed you take it back to the bounty board you turn it in for a reward like a guaranteed exotic drop or a guaranteed piece of armor based on the faction that you chose and then you could do the same thing for lost sectors where you can do something like a hidden sector where you have to go out now into a certain planet it'll tell you kind of like a riddle you have to go find this lost sector and then you have to do something in the lost sector to get a unique reward based on your faction. These are a little bit more rounded, and now you're looking at the total experience rather than just the end of it. Nice. Also, uh, I mean, I, I'm i kind of, I, I like Crucible, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking maybe during the faction, they had like maybe a week or a couple of days or a weekend or so, where mm -hmm. you have faction versus faction PvP. You know, you have like, you get, you get yes. you know, one full team of, you know, four of the Doyle Wit versus uh, Future War Cold, or you know, another game will be, you know, First in the market, whatever, and you, you know, and you kind of rack them up, and whoever has the most wins at the end of that weekend wins whatever, mm -hmm. like the the weapon mm -hmm. thing again, you know. But yeah, I like that. I love it. There's so many directions they could take faction rallies. Mm -hmm. right. Right. I would, you know, at this point, you know, let's let's finish up season three, get into Forsaken. I I think yeah. I I want I would like them to at the end of season three, you know, let everybody get their last catalyst they need, but then just like they did last time turn it off give them a month three months however long it takes and implement yeah. some of these ideas and then bring it back you know one you know they, that's what they did they did that's what they did i scrapped it waited a couple months brought it back added more features the features are meh but they added stuff you know do it again turn it off go back make it you know have more depth and then bring it back. You know, it, I think we're all going to have plenty to do in September for you to mm -hmm. shelve that and then bring it back later after a couple few months of grinding out Forsaken. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think that would be a good opportunity for them to shelve it and, and reapply. But but I like the puzzle idea. I mean, we all go crazy for puzzles. Yeah. 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 Whether it's being, you know, they're going to a secret room or getting that secret weapon or activating nodes mm -hmm. in a certain order or finding computers and... and, and in some obscure room and, and Reddit and everybody trying to calculate the positions of the stars of the given planet. You know? <laughs> no, but, but the community sort of gets involved. And then when you see the sleeper simulant quest and somebody finally figures it out, you, you want to go do it because that's one of the things mm -hmm. that drives you. Um, yeah. 
So I think those two, two, I mean, my opinion on faction rallies right now, it, it, you all know it, Jake doesn't, but I won't, I wouldn't suffer arthritis over it. I think the, the price to progress on destiny right now is just, it's just, I keep saying it too damn high. You for know, the you... first time, for the first time ever, I have really, really devolved into a uh, more casual type of player. I, you know, it, it was nothing for me to grind Iron Banner and Factions or whatever and just be, have everything up to date, I'm the, you know, of the most hardcore uh, time investment. And I'm still like rank 37 on my just future war cult. I haven't even pledged to the others. Mm -hmm. So I have no catalyst right now. Iron yeah. Banner, I have played mm -hmm. about literally. Iron Banner has come up twice in the season so far. Mm -hmm. Three matches of Iron Banner is all I've played. I the yeah. ornaments are pretty cool, but I I don't care to play it right now. Like it's not for me personally, not enough to give me that hook to keep you know because it, it's the state of Crucible. Like you know, tournaments aside, <clears throat> my own at home time to play Crucible doesn't do it for me right now. And as yeah. much as I would like to grind for Regix's Claymore, uh, I would. So even if the game was in a better state right now, I would still need a team of just like crazy athletes to carry my ass, right? But even I, I don't even feel right asking them right now because of the state that the game's in. It needs it, <laughs> it, it needs it needs a lot of work. But if they're you know obviously charity events and tournaments, like yes, please you know please do that. Get involved in that, you know, support it anywhere mm -hmm. you can, no matter who's doing it. You know, it's only going to make uh, the community better. It, uh, it's going to make Bungie do more and try harder. And, uh, yeah, I, I would love to call yeah. Bungie a freaking try hard. That's what I would like. <laughs> yeah. Please, I, uh, please be a try hard. <laughs> I got to rank – I got the rank forty seven. I'm pretty sure. I, I got you rank forty seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if I almost made it, but I can't make it. You know, I almost made it. Do, do I regret it? Not really, because like I, there were times where I could play Destiny two and grind a little more, but I just didn't want to. At, after that first, after that first faction rally, it's like do I really want to go back and do back into the last sectors again? Uh, I don't know. Not really. I'll just go play the different game or I'll just play a Crucible all night, whatever. And I don't know, man. It's just, it sucks, but I guess I got to double up, uh, do a little bit and not do new monarchy, which hurts me, but I uh, don't know. I got to rank three. That's it. <laughs> hey, I've seen that. I think, uh, <laughs> Solid. One, of my, one of my friends got there too. I think, uh, it was, it be a Rob at the rank three, I think, or but was it Jeff? One of them too. Got the rank three. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I got bored. After I really a while, want so. the Sunshot Catalyst, man. But I mean, oh, it's just, so good. Just, just the, <laughs> just the grind, man. I'm like, you know, yeah, it probably. I, well, but for so the next time it comes up, which will be the last time in this season, I'll finish it. I'll go ahead and like buckle down and finish it, just so I can get at least one. I am curious to see when they're gonna bring back those other two catalysts, because inevitably they're probably gonna update factions. I think they really should just put those catalysts in some other activity or change yeah. the way. Like, I don't want that catalyst to be the reason you join a faction. I really would like to see them rework that in some way. So I'm mm -hmm. curious to see where they'll add it back. Um, but yeah, the thing is, though, like, it's they gotta find how, they they gotta find out how to do this. Like, mm -hmm. the first couple of faction rallies, right? It was like mostly Dota and Numarchy. Future open the row one because everybody would like the Dota bit and. And new market colors or whatever, the armor look cooler, and no one like future work cool. Mm -hmm. And now they have some that you know that could change the windows every week, but the windows are obvious now because yeah, they want the catalyst. They're going to be fun to trend. I will we'll do this first, and this, and this, right. which is smart, smart in the community because hey, <laughs> we get all, everything we want. Well, uh, moving, how to, how, moving forward, how... you know, faction rallies, uh, we'll definitely see what they do with it. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the TWAB this week. Uh, we had a lot of good, a lot of really good information. I'll just kind of, um, you know, we'll, we'll go over it. The, the, they have this, this picture, if you go on Bnet and look at it, it it's like a mini roadmap. July 3rd through the 9th is going to be, uh, well, we got the winner's week that just happened. They're bringing back the Mayhem Crucible playlist, and then... On the seventh is Bungie Day, so they always do charitable events and cool like decathlon things or, or uh, some kind of. Uh, they always have some fun events going on and, and things you can participate in. Then July tenth, 
uh, is Iron Banner, and then obviously Guardian Con, which Bungie will be in full attendance. They will have a playable version of Gambit available. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. Um, uh, July 17th through the 23rd, uh, they got update 1.2.3. That'll come out on the 17th. Faction rallies will start again, and then the Supremacy Crucible playlist. Uh, I guess they're changing Supremacy from the permanent set that it's in and then turning it to a rotating playlist which thank god for that oh, damn, yeah yes um july is the only one that likes supremacy yes. Maybe, like it's, it. yes it's fun but you know <laughs> i don't like it yeah I'll, I'll be glad to see it as a rotating playlist you know yeah Kill confirmed. Uh, almost done Get with rid this of it. little uh, so july 24th I, I... through the 30th faction rallies winner's week and doubles crucible playlist will come back and then july 31st is when we get the solstice of heroes event now uh, something really important with that. July 17th is the big, uh, the next big update for us uh, where we're going to get um, some Crucible updates, uh, Prestige mode for the raid layers. Um, they're going, the Prestige modes that launch with uh, the, 7th, the July 17th update will introduce level uh, power level 400 weapons. And um, the developers did confirm on Twitter that it's not power weapons like energy, kinetic and power. It's like uh, all the weapons in the raid will have a chance to drop at 400 light. Okay, and then July 31st, when the Souls of, of Heroes event begins, that's when we'll get a chance to get uh, light level 400 armor, and that'll be our ticket to bumping up in light before September. So keep a lookout for that. So um, with some of the stuff y'all saw in the TWAB, I mean. What are you guys looking forward to the most? Uh, you know, especially you Crucible players. Uh, I'm looking forward to six six. Yes. Yeah, six, six. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the comp uh, changes mm -hmm. with with the matchmaking. So now, in comp, when oh, the update comes yeah. out, you'll get matched with someone with the same rank or similar rank as you. Instead of now, which is like still random. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. That's gonna be awesome. I'm excited about the. Uh, Valor is now going to be added into all the other plays. Like when you play Iron Banner or um, or uh, e you know you'll have you'll rank up in Valor as well. Um, and then even in Comp, if you play Comp, it will also level your Valor so you can double dip. So that's going to be really cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Another thing, Rumble will be um, a full time playlist finally. Yes, I love Rumble. Point minute. <laughs> rumble warrior so excited about that i like i like see rumble i'll go play rumble before i play a quick play right now because rumble yeah. is just me you know go in crack some skulls and get out okay i don't need to worry about whatever all the camping yeah. campersons out there you know so, so are they fixing three of coins three of coins i haven't seen anything on that i haven't oh, seen man. them talk about it at all as a matter of fact Dude, focus on, the, focus on the details, man. Sapphire <laughs> wire. <laughs> Bring it back, please. I miss it. I still have like 200 on my Q1 account. Yeah, I, I, I still, don't I judge still, me. Yeah, don't, 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 start, just don't start on things I want because I'll, I'll bitch about uh, 60 frames per second all night. <laughs> man, I, I'm, I hate to say it, it, but I, I think, you know, I really believe the Xbox One X could probably do it. Uh, but obviously they won't because then it's a 30 frames versus 60 frames in PvP problem. And then you'd have nine-year-olds complaining that this guy is a cheater. People do that recording. anyway, Contra. <laughs> yeah, do that anyway. Oh, 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 sure, sure. I remember we have a, a Babetron, a mutual friend of ours who uh, did uh, trials carries, and they reported to her many times. Oh, <laughs> man, yeah, I know. I, 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 they actually – so Babe and Pete were actually um, the people that helped carry me to the lighthouse for the very first time. So uh, shout out to them, Babetron and Petron. They're on Mixer now. Uh, mm -hmm. You can definitely go check them out. Good, good friends of ours in the community. They uh, they just got married, or they're about to get married too. Uh, Pete proposed yep. to Babe and at GuardianCon last year. Yeah, yeah, huh? that was really cool. But uh, but yeah, no, I don't think it matters what you do. Your people are always gonna be like, "Hey, yeah, that guy's cheating. I'm gonna report it." Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's any game any everywhere. Game everywhere, yes. yeah. You got an aim bot. So uh, let me let me so run Jay, through you're this. You're a teacher. You're a teacher, right? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So oh, yeah. what's your what's your uh, background currently? Uh, what do you mean? Like professionally. Oh, I am a sixth grade English teacher for a middle school. Um, mm -hmm. while I finished my master's degree, so I'm a very busy person. Nice. Yep. While doing everything else. Yeah. 
while doing all this other stuff. Um, I never got the chance to tell you guys. Uh, I had two very, uh, very interesting people walk into the last event uh, last weekend that were looking for me specifically to talk about the event. One of them from Sony and another one from MLG. Oh, so cool. Um, I'm wow. going to redact on those for a while because <laughs> those conversations are a little going, but those two people came in specifically looking for me about the event, which means they were either sent there or saw something about it. So wow. um, when I have more information about that, I will let you know. That's pretty cool. Wow, man. Yeah. yeah. Keep everybody updated because, uh, yeah, for sure. You know, what is it? Um, you mentioned something about uh, setting up something for next year. Did you, mm -hmm. can you elaborate on whatever that is? Yes. <clears throat> so I, I've always believed in going big. Um, I am honestly going to go for the, the West Coast convention that Destiny doesn't have. So I am in the process of working with ESL, um, the global events company, the marketing company, um, and everybody else that wants to get involved. And we're looking at a full convention. Um, we're going to make a convention with a tournament with a prize pool. So we're going to take over the Thomas and Mac, which is a 25,000 seat stadium for the tournament side. And I have a meeting with, uh, I have a meeting with MGM properties. I'm, I'm literally going to have a call with one of the vice presidents of the company about using MGM properties for the convention side. And we're going to have both. And um, you guys can actually find some of that information on vanguardscon.com. Wow. So the, the, yeah. the convention is going to be called what again? Vanguard's Con. Vanguard Con. Vanguard's Con. Okay. Yeah. Or is Vanguard's it Vanguard or Vanguard's Con? Vanguard's. Vanguard's yeah. Um, because plural. I believe the community is, yes, it's plural because that's who we are as a community. It's not one person, it's everybody. And we as a Destiny family need to come together and make that happen. Cool. What, um, so are, are there any, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here, but I'm going to ask anyway, but are, are there any specific or uh, single or multiple charities that are going to be part of this as a focus? I'm assuming so. Yeah, so we're going to do uh, we're going to do the St. Jude thing. Um, well, I, I feel like Destiny has really been kind of exclusive to St. Jude. Um, where I'm not against moving into other charities as well. Charity is charity. Um, right. And we and I have no problem representing the main core focus is obviously raising money for St. Jude. Um, but we're going to get I'm actually in talks with uh, Wounded Warriors Project's and a couple other things as well about getting them there and having a charity row to raise awareness for all of these different charities. Um, so now it's it's bringing all the different gaming communities together for the sole purpose of putting charities online. So the big question always when you do conventions and events mm -hmm. is that they must be profitable. So what's what are you what angles are you looking at mm -hmm. for that? Now define profitable. Are we talking about for me or are we talking about for the charities? No, I'm talking about covering your own expenses on, on the actual venues and everything else, okay. and then getting it, getting a, you know, getting it out there and making sure that tickets are sold. Got it. Um, that is where the marketing company comes in. They want to take the entire event and market that fully, and they are a global marketing company, um, and they will handle all of that logistical. the uh, The global events company will be in charge of the ticketing and the registration, hotel discount links, airfare discount links, Uber, um, points of interest, shuttles. Um, attractions in las vegas um, they do everything on commission only so every ticket that is sold um, they make money the event makes money which will go right back to the charities um, all of that is completely done through that so there's no out-of-pocket expenses on my end it's all commission okay so yep. but, so what, what i hear is that you just need people to get their their butts to vegas when you when you actually do this essentially that's exactly what it is i'm setting up the entire convention um on my time with no money involved as so as funny as it is it's all based off of uh gentlemen's agreements written in contracts so there's no right. fiscal responsibility to having to secure the venue or whatever and then once people come here that's where all of the magic happens so in terms of dates are you planning any any events closer to your event can you, you know do you want people to fly in just to your event uh, singly because it's going to be unique on the weekend or are you timing it close to something else that's related maybe a gaming convention uh, we are, it's, it's kind of difficult because I mean, when you think about all of the different things like PAX, Guardian Con, um, Twitch Con, all of E3, um, it's very difficult to find a time to slide in an event like this, uh, because either people are traveling to other things or have already got things booked <laughs> in or whatever. Um, we are looking at September of next year for a couple reasons. Number one is that is a very slow month for conventions. Most of the time, because people are going back to school, summer's kind of finishing, Holidays are starting to come in, and then that is the uh, that's kind of the destiny turnaround point with release dates for D1 and D2. Uh, we have the right. we have we have the releases. 
it's kind of common sense if we're a destiny community driven event which will have other event uh, other communities involved that there's mm. it just makes sense to put it in september to follow along the traditions destiny's already done so in other words you, you your plan would be to have a, your convention your competitiveness and then uh, a week later maybe destiny or bungie releases some new content or dlc yeah yes that would be really great actually mm-hmm. that's i i love that idea i think uh I well, because that... you could also bring in Bungie to sort of display your previews in your events. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That that would certainly open that door, and then that's when you can get the hero players in. You know? Yes, hundred could... percent. Yeah, <laughs> driving those big names to the event is what's going to drive a lot of people. And Vegas is very cheap to fly to, and uh, the hotel accommodations in September are more than generous. You're looking at about thirty dollars a night for a hotel on the strip. So the fuck okay. I can go. Oh, wow. I'm... I, I did, a, <laughs> yeah. I, so I did a, a, a small streaming documentary for a class I took last year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I did have a lot of questions and, and feel that a lot of big streamers and small streamers alike. Eventually, uh, the video was made with the people that gave me the best answers. But I did yeah. I did get turned down a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, the, the the big names, you know, it's, it's, I, I had the same reaction, you know, a lot of people had when, when you mm-hmm. meet someone who just became big. It's like, dude, you're, yeah. you're, you just got big like three months ago. I mean, come on. You, that's the mm-hmm. least you can do. But, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, you know, the personal feelings and the anger I held. You know, I'm, right. I'm going to right now. Let's do this. All right. So, <laughs> look, <we're, laughs> well, no, I, 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 but, but, so, but let me, let me finish. Let me go. finish. Let me finish. <laughs> the, the, the idea is, you know, obviously you'll, you're going to have yays and nays all over the place because. 100%. There's going to be people that like you, that don't like you, that want to do what you're doing, and they just can't or haven't been able to. And yeah. you know, there's going to be a little bit of that of that as well. But if you are offering something to the community that's new and innovative, and mm-hmm. it's going to, you know, lead on to bigger things in terms of competitiveness and community, mm-hmm. I think you're doing us a service. As, as yeah. Destiny players, if you're doing us a service, I will back you. You know, 100. percent And so should everybody else because. Right now, it's pretty stale. Like we've been, you know, we, you've all said the same things for different things. Crucible, boring. Grinding, mm-hmm. boring. You know, factions, boring. You know, give us yeah. something that that uh, you know is going to be exciting and fun, and at the same time interesting, and mm-hmm. then we could watch skill people go and play. But at the same time, if it's not going to come from Bungie, it has, it has to come from you. Yeah, well, we, that's dumb. that's something that um, the team and I, I actually have a full team of about 20 people who are volunteering their services in. Um, well, I've got people from Destiny Tracker that want to be full riders. I have an event operations manager that's donating his time. Um, and we have in my Discord a full section that's currently locked that we're kind of going through. We're getting all these ideas. The website, by the way, is functional. You can go in, submit things, and it, auto- and it works. It, you, it will literally trigger. Link in the um, chat. And we have a little over a hundred different ideas that we're working with. Um, I actually just got in touch with a, uh, a props and masterworks company to start designing what the look of the convention is. Imagine walking through the convention doors and you see the reef. Okay, you're walking Yo, in and you, it is designed. You should as reach the out reef. to Impact Props. I don't know if he'd do it or if he has time, but I uh-huh. mean, man, could you yeah. imagine? Imagine the Vanguard's con. You walk in, yeah. like you said, and it's like some Shax's Crucible setup and Sh- Statue of Shax and. And mm-hmm. if it was at the quality of what he can make or even close to it, I'd be like, holy shit. Like, yeah, so, uh, the, the yeah. we're, design- cool. <laughs> we're the designing cool. the food court to look like the ramen shop. So people will yeah, actually go dude. there and we'll oh, have yes. ramen. Yes. Um, you're not just going into the convention just to walk around and experience, though. You are part of the experience. So you are going to get a uh, part of your ticket. You're actually going to go- you're gonna get a guardian name of your own that you're going to design. And you're gonna go out and you're gonna search for cade stashes. You're gonna search for lost sectors. That's you're gonna, the you're shit, gonna, man. Let's you're, the, go. the whole idea that is, is that cool. you're interacting with the convention rather than just going and seeing what people are giving you. You're now part of the experience, which is something that most conventions don't do. You're more just there to lounge and and kind of relax and feel the community vibe, but you're not doing anything more than just being there. Now you are in it, and yeah, that's what's pretty cool, cool, man. With IP, that's like fun. You know, intellectual property rights. You know, that's, yes, that's, that's, that's kick you in the bud really fast. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's some of the logisticals I'm working around. But imagine going, going through a quest and actually going and finding things and being rewarded. By the way, there are rewards for people that do these. So um, all of that is going to be uh, funded through private funding, and and, um, and the ticket registrations are going to pay for some of that as well. So it sounds, it sounds like there's a cosplay contest somewhere in there. 
<laughs> yes. Um, there, and also to expand on the tournament, one of the biggest things that we had the major feedback was is is consoles involved um, because the tournament was PC based and the major one at the Thomas and Matt um, is going to be PC based, but consoles will be able to have their own in convention tournament on their own stage. That's so cool. they'll still have their own experience. It just won't be in the 25,000 seat stadium. But they'll right. still have You're own. reaching out to us plugs. Thank you. Now, is, is, there, is there a reason why uh... The, the past from it was just PC? Uh, venue restriction. Um, because being on that stage, um, all of those computers that they were at are modular, so they move around. Um, but because the venue is designed the way that it is, getting consoles in there was more, much more te technologically difficult than it's made out to be. The PC gotcha. send out audio a lot easier. Gotcha. Okay. That's actually yeah. a really great explanation. I'm glad y'all mentioned that because I know that's mm -hmm. a big question that a lot of people have when you're mm -hmm. talking about stuff like this because obviously no one wants to be left out on the console side you know like yeah. conscious said like a pleb like me you know i'm like <laughs> hey i, I want to play Der derpstiny too let me play but uh no that makes a lot of sense like technologically <laughs> you gotta it's gotta work right it, it has yeah. to function so uh however we can get there is how we need to get there you know and it's not yes a personal attack on anybody by any means right <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so we're uh, just a couple final things to throw in. We're going to do a Shoutcasting 101 group. Uh, we're going to have a separate stage where people will be able to go and actually test their shout shoutcasting contra, skills. Contra, sign with, up uh, for this. Free. Please, please <laughs> Contra, do it. <laughs> um, we're going to have yes. – uh, anybody can go up. They get a five-minute chance to be able to shoutcast a video <clears throat> uh, that they see, or they watch people play. They do shoutcasting. They get feedback, and then they do it again to see if they got better. And um, Token Soli and Fallout Plays, who did the shoutcasting for this event – um, I'm going to see if they can kind of moderate that and give that feedback to try and get people better because shoutcasting is a cool thing. They did really good, by the way. They did really good. Yeah, they, yeah they I was did. watching them. I mean, and there yeah. was a couple of times that you could tell they were trying to figure out when the camera was going to change to the feed mm -hmm. and this and that. And, you know, very, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, it's easy to see that, you know, this was, there were a lot of firsts for everybody in this. And, uh, yeah. dude, they handled it like a champ. They were so good. <laughs> They did really awesome. I really want to hat, hats off to those guys for that, you know. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, if I if I ever do it, it'll be a joke. People. people <laughs> no, <will> dude. <laughs> Contra. <laughs> Jake, you haven't heard him, but Contra, we call him our hype man for a reason. If it's, he's <laughs> he's he's better than he gives himself credit for. So for we'll sure. have to test that out one day. I just want to do like the marketing movie trailer, like Gambit. You know, fight, collect, <laughs> invade. You know, I want to do something like that. <laughs> but uh, no, anyway. Hold that work together. I got an idea for what I want to do with you right now. <laughs> yeah, hey, let's, hey, we can collab all day, dude. Like, I've, I've got me and I saw your stuff in After Effects. I do a lot of similar stuff, and uh, I would love to bounce ideas. Uh, that would be yeah, great. For sure. That would be great. Epic. <laughs> yeah. In the world. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, right. let's not. In the world. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, moving on to the future post one, two, three, guys, what do you want to see Bungie fix next? Fix or add or both or both. I, oh, oh, wait, we can bring this up really quick as a last topic. Game Informer mm -hmm. just released uh, their cover art for the next month's yes. issue and Looks a badass. little, a little trailer Vidoc kind of thing. And what they said was that the the trailer they showed was telling us what they were going to be covering over the month of July, and they said, um, you know, just different activities in the new spaces. Uh, they're going to show off all nine supers and a lot more other great stuff. So go check them out. But uh, did you all get to see that little trailer? No, not yet. I have not. No. Okay, do yourselves a favor when you get a chance to check it out. Uh, it's got a lot of cool uh, tidbits of info, even in the little trailer they showed. There was one clip that showed some gameplay of what looked like either, I don't know if it was PoE or um, the Tangled Shore or whatever, um, but it looked like Escalation Protocol is coming back in that expansion. So there's little little nuggets in there spread out that uh, they're going to be showing off all month. So You know. You mean the activity that's harder than a raid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, definitely get you know check that out if y'all get a chance. There's, I I would like to see them add matchmaking to that mode, you know. Like I, yeah. I can't imagine what kind of a coding or server side logistical nightmare that would be if it's even possible. But if they could add right. it, I would really like that. 
How about you? Uh, me, I would like to. I don't know. I kind of want to wait and see how Forsaken is first, and then go from there. I'm not. I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I, yeah. don't I don't know. I, I wait. I wait till Forsaken comes out, and then I'll, I'll decide what other things we can upgrade. Right now, my biggest thing was just the uh, weapon balancing and weapon slots and random rolls. After, after that, I want to see. Well, you know, see how it works and plays out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, there, so you're right. over Cade's death already? How dare you? We're gonna talk no, about no. that in a minute. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, in den- I'm, I'm in denial. <laughs> Eric, what do you think, buddy? He's always here with me. Uh, right. Well, I don't know what I'm looking forward to at this. Point. Well, or uh, what they need to fix, but I am looking forward to uh, the collections because the vault. Oh, yes. The vault oh. design by design mm-hmm. right now is horrendous. I hate it. I hated it day one. I hate it more now that I have one free slot open in my my vault to move ah, stuff you're around. Ah, you're a hoarder. So okay, <laughs> now the truth comes out. This is a loot based game yeah. with not enough vault space. But you should know Eric by now. It's, uh, Eric expects nothing, so therefore he's amazed by everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, a great, that's right? a great perspective. <laughs> Angel, what it's about like you? A... What do you want to see him add? Um... Shadow Price? No? Really? Okay. Wow, that's an OG throwback right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, right? Okay. Damn. <laughs> Shadow Price, okay. No, um, definitely, I hate to say it, more vault space, maybe. My vaults in D1 are even so full. Like... <laughs> The collections are gonna help that though, if you know what I yeah. mean. Like, yeah. especially yeah. so, I could for see now. I could see our vault space problem still being a problem for one reason. Oh yeah. The collections are gonna give us access to everything at any time we want. We pay our little materials, we get the thing. But I think once we have the random rolls and we do finally get the better devils, and we can get sixteen of them that are all different and unique, that's where our vault space is gonna be like. Well, I don't have any more vault space because my hundred devil better devils is taking up all the shit. I don't know what to do. You know, like I mean, I, if that's the case, then you gotta get rid of some better yeah. devils. <laughs> well, going back to D one, it's the same thing. Like we had those random rolls, and then people saved the same weapons with different rolls right. just to like that's, test them out, and then get back. rid of them, and then get new ones, and yeah. That's coming. Hey, I, got, I, gotta, I gotta fix so, for your vault space. I gotta fix for your vault space. Believe everything. Make- <laughs> <laughs> Make Warlock helmets or what, whatever helmets be able to infuse into other characters' helmets. Oh, Boom. that would be great. Yeah, um, they had. They used to have it yeah. in D1. They took it away. Yeah. I don't know why. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. because I, I, I amass a, a, a bunch of you know stuff that was high level, and then I created a new character, only to find out I couldn't infuse it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's why I only have one character right now, because because I'm not going to go through <laughs> the same storyline two times one. <laughs> Jake, so, admitted it. How, how about also, you, Jake? What about uh, what are something you'd like to see him add, especially on your side of things with esports and stuff like that that you're hoping well, for? As funny as it is, some of the things that I want in the game are actually not esports yet, because um, that's that's a venture I'm going to continue on anyways. Um, the first thing I want to uh, there's three major things I want. Number one, two tap melee. I'm so tired yeah. <laughs> of three three or four hits Why on a melee to finally kill somebody. Like we need two tap melees back for everybody. Um, and number two, we need PVE and PVP separation. So just like, um, I love the way that the D one map style was where I can go anywhere on any of the worlds and all the strikes and missions were there. I can't go replay a mission. So I have to literally hope to God it is in a meditation or I can't do it. Um, I can't do a specific strike. I have to go into the playlist and hope it chooses it. And I can't go and just play clash. I have to hope to God it's in quick play. So separate it, please. Let me have a you know choice. And then number three, please, for the love that is mighty and holy, Bungie, please listen here. Bring back Rift. Oh, I man. Want Rift I want yeah. Rift 2.0 want with the ball so throw bad. mechanic. Are you kidding me? Go long. Yes, and then he, yes, dude. And then it goes off the map, and he's like, oh, shit. You just <laughs> – did you really? You threw it off the map. You suck. <laughs> dude, you know, I think it's coming because they haven't said – you notice how they're not talking about PvP at all. And they mm-hmm. did say there is a new PvP mode coming, but that's it. They're going to be in so hush-hush about it. Even the yeah. Game Informer articles, the Game Rant articles and interviews, like they're not saying shit. So that, I'm yeah. telling you, it makes sense. It's there. It's already in the game. The mechanics there. Like it, if, yeah. they, if they don't do it, I'm just going to be like, <laughs> I'm done with this. <laughs> uh, do me a favor. Instagram it. 
Yeah, yeah, get the video. <laughs> Helmet rages. Just uh, the, uh, why he got his nickname, and then I'm just see me punching the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I mean, you can also put a stupid... helmet on your head. And, yeah, you know, you <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. How I got my nickname. Yeah, it's a uh, another story. So, <laughs> well, I think that's gonna do it for tonight, everybody. Uh, Jake, thanks for coming on, yeah. man. Tell us uh, one yeah. more time. What's the charity event? How can they find that? And how can they find you? All right, you guys, you can find me on uh, twitch.tv backslash the Jake Parker or Twitter at Parker on Twitch. Um, and the charity event is a full Destiny community-driven um, and originated convention that's hopefully going to be happening uh, next September. It'll feature a tournament and a convention fully interactive. More details will be on vanguardscon.com. The link is in chat right now. Um, make sure you go there. All of the submissions are ready. If you guys have questions, hit the contact this page and send me an email. I will be happy to respond. There you go. Contra, where can people find you at, good sir? Uh, at home. But <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> um, to make life easier on you, it's ContraBank.com, and then I'll, I'll redirect you, so trust me. Oh, there you go. That's easy. <laughs> Shameless plug. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Eric underscore digital underscore. Mr. J. Mr. J. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash crazyj on Twitter at crazyj. Miss Angel. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at angel underscore zero and at twitch on angel zero. That's Z3RO, correct? Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. My, my name is The Helmet Fire. You can find me on uh, Twitter, at The Helmet Fire. Uh, you can follow my YouTube if you'd like. I do make some Destiny videos here and there once in a while in my off time, if I can. Um, as far as the show goes, Travelers, you can follow us on Twitter, at Travelers PC, on Twitch, at twitch.tv slash Travelers Podcast. We record live every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And... Um, so make sure you drop a follow and uh, turn on notifications so you know when we go live. I want to say thanks to everybody for listening this week. Thanks so much to our special guest for stopping in. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much again, man. Yeah. So uh, yeah. until next time, everybody, we'll see. <laughs> man, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna cut that out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Travel.